The slide transition makes your widgets change in their position and what we can build with it is this scenario where you can slide different widgets to another position and then it is also animating every time back if you go away with your fingers from the screen. We will start this application with this design already. So we have here some list tiles. So these are these tiles which you see here as a widget and we want to make them swipeable to the left side. And this build list tile is inside of our list view. So we show here multiple widgets under each other. And now we need to add this swipeable. Therefore I will wrap it here with a new widget. And I will call this slidable widget. And then we also need to create this widget. And here inside you can basically write state anim and then press enter and create this slidable widget. And this makes that we also have an animation controller which we need later to do our animation back if we have slided and if you go away with our fingers from the screen. Then we add here this constructor with two fields. So first of all the child, which will be our list tile, which we have put inside. And we will also put here this unslided callback inside so that we can later handle the functionality what should happen if we have slided to the left side. Instead of this container in our build method, we will first of all add this widget.child. So this is our list tile. And now if I hot restart this application, it's exactly the same application, nothing has changed. And now we want to add this functionality of sliding. Around our widget, we will then put a gesture detector to register the interaction of our user. And we also put here then this on horizontal drag start, update and end inside. And start and end is basically when the user starts with the interaction and when the user ends with the interaction. And this is every time between, so if he's sliding, then he's always doing here this update. The next thing is to create here these three methods then. And inside of it, we want to add the functionality that we can slide our widget. To make the sliding work, we start here by our build method and wrap our child widget. This is our list tile inside of this slide transition. And we want to put here our always stopped animation inside and here inside you can put an offset inside. And basically the first value is the X value and we set it to minus controller dot value. And the controller value will range from zero to one. So this every time for the X coordinate minus zero until minus one. And for the Y coordinate, we put it every time to zero because we don't want to change it here on the Y coordinate. We only want to change it horizontally. And to start with our gestures, we first of all need here at the top a new field, which is called drag extend. And this is basically saving our value, how much we have dragged to the left side. And then we want to implement the on drag start. And here we call first of all set state. And here inside of it, we put our drag extend to zero. And this is because this is our default value. So this means that we have not changed here the position of this widget and the controller, we will reset it every time so that we can later use it for doing this back animation. And now we go over here to our on drag update. And here we put to our drag extent this details dot primary delta. And this is basically here saying every time the change which we are doing in our on our X coordinate. And this will be then added to our variable. And then we have here the sliding later. But I will show you exactly what this is doing later so that you get a brief sense about what is going on here. Then we want to update this drag extent. So we want to put our controller dot value to this drag extent. And then we divide it here by the width of our widget. So this will be from here to here. This is the width of our widget. And we will divide this drag extent, how much we have dragged here inside of this widget by this one so that we get a percentage value. And now we can already try this out. So if I go here and drag around, then you see that it is changing. However, if I stop here, then he is simply also stopping, so we also need to implement on drag end. 
And to make this slide back, if we go with the fingers away from the screen, we simply call here this controller.fling and this will drive the animation back to the origin position. And now if I hot restart this application, you might think, okay, this is already working, so let's try this out. So I go here and I let loose my fingers and you see nothing will change. So it seems like this is not really working, that this is flinging back. And why this is not working is because this gets never updated. And how we can update this controller.value here every time with this controller.fling is by wrapping the slide transition in an animated builder. And this animated builder has then here next to the builder property also another property which is called animation. So we can add here this property and inside of this property we want to set our controller inside. And this animated builder will care about that every time if our controller gets a new value. So if the animation is changing, then it will also update the slide transition and then this will be here reflected inside of our animation. So now if I try this again out, then I slide here to the left and now I go away with my fingers and you see, okay, it's going to the wrong side. So we made also here a mistake, I guess. And the mistake is that we have here by default a velocity of 1.0 inside. And what we want to change here is the velocity to minus one. So it's going into the opposite side. And now if I hot restart, then this should work. And now I drag here around and you see that it's every time going back to the origin position. And to go more into this slide transition so you understand exactly how this is working, I will simply change here this value for now. And I put here, for example, 0 0.5 inside. And then you see that everything, every widget is changed by 50% to the right. And if I put here minus 0 0.5 inside, everything is translated to the left. And you can here basically play around with different values. So now it's 10% going to the left. If I put here two inside, then it's going 20% to the left and so on. And what the animation controller value later is doing is that it is providing this value from zero to one. And then you see this animation happening. So I put it here again back to the controller value, minus one in front and then we have every time this animation. The thing is now that I can drag into this direction to the left side or I can also drag to the right side and then he will also do this animation which is a kind of weird and to prevent that this is happening we want also to go to our on drag update and here inside after the drag extend we want to add a condition so we always want to make sure that our drag extend is positive and if it's not the case, then we want to return it here so the controller value gets never updated with a negative value. And now if I drag here around, I can drag to the left side and it's working. If I try to do now the opposite and drag to the right side, it's not working anymore. Now it's also cool to have here every time under it some background, like you can see, there's something behind. And every time if we slide that we add here this heart or we put it away again. And by the way, you can get the source code with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you can get my whole Flutter course where I teach you how to become a better and more efficient Flutter developer. Now we go here to our on drag end method. And here we want to add this controller value greater than a threshold. And this threshold will be, for example, a value of 10%. So if we drag here more than 10% to the left side, so this is maybe here 10%, if we go over this value and to the left side, then we want to add here this widget on slided. So we send to the outside world that we have slided and then we can care here about the functionality what should happen. So I will also add here this action threshold and I put it for a default value of 10%. And now we can go back to our main file and here inside of this on slided, we can now do something what should happen if we slide to the left side. And here inside, we first of all want to toggle our isFerret field 
inside of our item. So every item has here this field is favorite and we simply toggle it. And then our chat has here this favorite icon later. And we also want to show a snack bar. So every time we change here this uh, liking, then we want to put here inside a message and it says you have your chat partner. And inside we want to say you have liked or you have unliked your chat partner, depending on the value which we have here in our item dot is favorite state. And now I have also to show this uh, heart icon and therefore I need to go to the list tile which is here displayed and here I have already a stack inside so on top of the circle avatar I want to show a heart and therefore I put here this positioned widget inside and I create here this build heart method which will be our widget and we want to show this heart every time if this item is favorite and if it's not favorite, we don't want to show the heart here over our circle avatar. And now we want to create this build heart method. So first of all, I create a container and here inside I put a decoration inside. So I set here the shape to circle because we want to have a circle heart and inside we set a color of white. And I also want to set a border of red and I set some padding. And then I set here this icon, which is the favorite icon, and I set the color of this favorite icon to red. And then it will also change that this heart is every time showing in our list tile above our circle avatar. So let's try this out. I slide here and now you see we have here this heart and also this snack bar is showing up. And every time we can like here someone or unlike someone and it's changing here depending on if we slide and this is I think pretty cool and it's also pretty easy to accomplish. And the last thing we want to have is that we also have some background. So you see that we have here also this rounded background and some heart behind it. And therefore we add here this background to our slidable widget. So here under the child I add this background and we want to build here this background inside of a new method. But first of all, we go here to our slidable widget and inside of it, we want to create first of all here this background. And we also put it here as a parameter inside. And then we want to create here a field size. And this is later our size, how big this background can be. And therefore I will also set here this size in our on direct start. So I set here this context size. So basically this will be the size of this widget because we need to know this so that we can define how big the background is. And now we go here to our build method and we wrap here this uh, list tile widget around our stack. And inside of the stack, we put here this size box inside with our background. And we also set here the width and height to the size width and height to the field which we have created before and which is also here initialized in our on drag start. And now every time this list tile is showing and under it is this background showing. And that's everything what we need for this widget. So we can go again back to this main dart file and actually create this background. So I create here this build background method. Here inside we put a container. I give it some decoration. So I want that it is also here rounded. So I put here this border radius inside. So it is also rounded like this list tile here. And I give here some color and some padding. I align it to the right center. So we have here this whole widget as a background, but we want to align it to the center and here to the right so it will be displayed here on the right side. And then we also want to set what should be displayed. So we want to put here on the right side this favorite border icon and I set your size and the color to white. And now we can try this out. So every time I drag here, you should see that we have here behind this icon, this favorite border, and it's also aligned to the right side. And I think this looks pretty cool. So every time I change here now, we also have here some visibility behind it so the user maybe know what's going on here that we like the actual card or that we also unlike the actual card. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up 
and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon. Bye.